Hey, Mark Milan here. Thank you for letting me be a part of your day. And thank you for allowing me to share some ideas on leadership so that you can serve and achieve excellence wherever God has you. Um, today I'm talking about strategic planning. This is an area that I personally thought I would never succeed in, so I hope that encourages you. Uh, every time I thought about strategy and strategic planning, I just always was drawing a blank. I didn't know how to format anything, and it wasn't that I didn't have the desire, I just didn't have any experience or understanding of what it really was. And so maybe you're in a leadership role and they're asking you to map out three months, six months, a year, three years, and you're just kind of stuck on how to get started. I'm hoping that today will help you uh, gain some framework on how to look at that and how to approach it. And I hope that it can help you win wherever God has you serving and leading. So let's jump into it. We're going to talk about three things. Here's just three simple ideas on strategic planning. Number one, and this is a key. Number one, identify the win. Identify the win. Now, the win can be the goal. Uh, it could be the end result, something that you're looking to achieve. Um, but without clearly identifying the win, you will be chasing the wind. I didn't plan to say that, but that just made sense in the moment. So I hope you can receive it. Identifying the win is key because if you can't quite articulate what the real win is, you will spend a lot of energy, you will spend resources, you will focus a lot of attention on multiple things and then at the end of doing all those things, you won't know which one to really celebrate as the one that helps you or helps your organization achieve its goal. So identifying the win, let me give you some practical ways to think about this. Maybe you're on a worship team. What is the win? What is the goal of the worship team when they're serving? Maybe you're in hospitality. What is the real goal? Can you articulate that? Can you narrow that down to one or two sentences or at most a paragraph? Uh, maybe you have a business, maybe it's sales, maybe it's something else, but whatever, try to figure out what the real win of the role and the team is, and that will set the target. That'll be the kind of the end result. That's what we're hoping is the fruit of everything we're about to do. And you have to really get that clear, because if that's unclear, you'll just be you'll just be chasing and trying to do a bunch of things because you don't really know which area you're you're going after and one of the downsides of not really identifying the win is that it can become very discouraging and deflating um, you can feel like you're losing most of the time so spend a good amount of time trying to narrow down and zero down what is the win maybe it's a win for three months maybe it's a win for six months Maybe it's the win for the year, but whatever that is, that becomes the target. And that's something you want to be able to see. That's something you want to be able to articulate. You want your team to be able to see, and you want them to know what that is. When that gets achieved, it's it's a high five moment. When that gets achieved, it's a celebration moment. It's a, we did it. We Here's what we came to do, and we did it. Great, great work, everyone, great work. So identify the win, that's number one. Number two, Break it down to smaller goals. So get the win, and now you gotta slice down the goals to smaller distances, okay? So, for example, if you have to onboard a staff member onto your team, okay? Uh, normally, in the places I've worked, they ask for a three to six month onboarding plan. So I look at a list of things that I want the person to be able to begin to accomplish and learn within those six months, right? And then as I take the list, I look at them down, I look at them and I break down what are the most important ones, what are the three to four most important ones, and I move those to the first three months. And then I move the rest to the six months. So this is just a way for you to organize the steps that will get us towards the win. So you gotta break the big goal down, whatever the big goal is, you wanna break that down into smaller pieces because then that makes it achievable in the short game. The short game is real important because as you have a shorter distance, you bring momentum. From here to here, when we achieve this, we, we win, we're winning. And you get to remind your team, hey guys, great work, we achieved this. That builds, that builds encouragement, it builds confidence, it builds momentum 
to get us to the next one. When the distance is this long, it's a long time and it's a long wait to feel like you're accomplishing anything. So you wanna shorten the distance between each step so that it leads towards the goal, but that you can gain momentum over time. Vince Lombardi, so here's a thought on, on number two. Vince Lombardi, when he became the coach, the football coach of the Green Bay Packers, uh, he stepped into a losing team. They were the worst team in the NFL. And in his mind, he envisioned a championship team. Now, he wanted them to be a championship team. He knew they could be a championship team. But he also understood that if he told them directly that they would be a championship team, that it would just be like the most outrageous thought ever because they hadn't experienced winning. They were a losing team when he inherited them. So there were a number of smaller goals that they were going to have to accomplish to then be able to accept this bigger idea of becoming a championship team. So what Vince did, as genius as he was as a football coach, instead of talking about being a championship team, he didn't even talk about winning the conference. He didn't even talk about winning home field advantage. These are all football terms. I'm sorry if you're unfamiliar with football, but it's easy to, to share this story. Um, Vince Lombardi talked about tackling and ball possession. The fundamentals of football is what he called it. And so he got the losing team to understand that if they're gonna have any chance to win a game, they have to break it down to this small goal of tackling positioning and winning the football, just the fundamentals of football. And so he focused all of the team's energy and understanding there. Now he still saw the goal of becoming a championship team, but he, he veiled that from the team so that they could look at the smaller goals. And as they got good at blocking and tackling, they got better chances at winning. And if they started winning, they had a chance to win their division. If they had a chance to win their division, they could win their conference. And if they could win their conference, they have a chance to compete and win a Super Bowl championship. And of course, Green Bay did win the first three unofficial Super Bowl champions chips because at that time they weren't called Super Bowls. They were called championship games. So they won the first three and then when they moved it to the Super Bowl, they won the first two. So they won five championships. He took a losing team, how? He took a, a huge goal, he identified what it was, okay, but then he broke it down to small chunks of goals that would get them headed towards the right direction. So that's number two, break it down into small goals. Number three, these are what I call the tactics, okay? Tactics or tactical schemes. Create the steps that climb towards the smaller goals. Now, here's what I mean by that. So I'll give you three ways I see it in my mind. Maybe it can help you if you wanna write these down. There's the mission, then there's the strategy, and then there's the tactics, okay? The mission is that big goal, is that championship for the team, right? It's the identifying the win. That's the mission. What's the, what's the win? That's the mission. We are on mission. We're accomplishing our mission. That's the first part. The second part is the strategy. What are we gonna put in place that would guide us towards that goal. So that's the strategy, I see it that way. And then the third one is the tactics. The tactics are the micro steps, the micro things that contribute almost on a week to week basis to those smaller goals that we've set. And let me give you some language for that. So let's say you come to me as a leader and you say, I wanna have 200 volunteers on our team. And I go, that sounds amazing. When do you wanna have, by when do you wanna have 200 people on your team? Okay, so now you've taken a big goal, but now I'm kind of forcing you to look at it through steps and tactics, right? The goal is 200 team members, great. Maybe that's the total number you need. Maybe I've come to you and I go, what do you need to succeed in your ministry? And you go, I need 200 volunteers. Okay, great. So for this year, how many volunteers do you think you need to accomplish the mission this year to get towards 200. And you go, well, if I can get 75 this year, that'll get us towards our goal. Like, okay, so we start to do the math and we break it up and we go, okay, 75 this year, maybe 125 next year, and then boom, we're at 200. Okay, so that gives us a framework for over the next two years. Now, for this year, 
for 75 volunteers, what are you going to do every quarter, or rather every month, to onboard that number that will contribute to 75 volunteers for the year? That's what I call tactics. So you're gonna have to get it to that level if you're going to achieve the smaller goals, and if you achieve the smaller goals, you will finally achieve the win. So strategy, in essence, is is like baking a cake and then breaking it down to the smallest size of what the ingredients are and what you need in the amount of time to kind of cook the thing. Does that make sense? So you want to have the win before you, then you want to set the smaller goals, the smaller steps that build momentum and build confidence, but then you want to look at the tactical, the micro steps that will move us from here to here. So this is the smaller goal, but what actually moves us in that direction? Those are the tactical goals. Uh, Jocko Willink, he's a podcaster. He has great content on YouTube. Of course, he has a podcast. He has a couple of great books on leadership that I personally love. One of his chapters of his book, Extreme Ownership, is a chapter on what he calls Simplify. Simplify. So uh, when a when a a strategy is too complicated when an idea is just too big. Sometimes what the leader needs to do is to step back and remove themselves from it and then allow the simplicity of the idea to create the pathway to get there. And that's how we help our teams win. And that's what really strategic planning is all about. It's helping our team win by understanding the small steps that help them accomplish the small goals that if we continue to accomplish these small goals, we will then accomplish our mission. And that's what it's all about. So that's all I have for you today. I hope it helps you in your leadership. I hope it helps you to serve and achieve excellence wherever God has you. Until next time, from my heart to yours.